those who are here today, Father, we ask, Father, as we sing your praise before your throne of grace, that you just anoint everything, every song, every heart. Open us up, Father, that we can hear what you have, the word that you have us for, for us today. And Lord, let everything we do, not just only in church, but everything that we do this entire week, be for thy glory and for thy honor. For we know, Lord, that your word says that if we, if we give you the honor and give you the glory, Father, that we would have favor with God and with man. Amen. And so this week, Father, we pray that we would have favor with, with man. And Lord, that we would leave a, a, lead a life that is righteous according to your word. Yes. As we sing your praises, Father, let the Holy Spirit come down. For Father, we trust that you and your thoughts are totally above our thoughts and our ways. Let us now give praise to you as your word says, enter your courts with thanksgiving and with praise. We thank you and we praise you again, Father, for another day of breath. Amen. I just sing this song, so glad I'm yours, Lord. Let's sing it. Let's worship him. Amen. So glad I'm yours, Lord. So glad I'm yours. So glad you're Spirit, sweep over my 
But since he rejected me when I called, and no one gave heed when I stretched out my hand, since you ignored all my advice and would not accept my rebuke, I in turn will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you, when, land, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and troubles overwhelm you. Then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord, since they would not accept my advice and spur my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of the fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and will be at ease without fear of harm. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Sing a few more songs. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day.
Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. Oh, in the sweet, in the sweet, 
in the book of Revelation. Everything in the kingdom of God is by revelation. By now, you should know that this is the truth. Without revelation, there's no salvation. Without revelation, there's no light. It's revelation. We're reading Revelation chapter 3, beginning from verse 20. Amen? When was the book of Revelation written? Before the foundation of the world. Hallelujah. When was your name put in the Lamb's book of life? Before the foundation of the world. Look at Revelation 20. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the doors, I will come unto him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcome, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I have also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. You may be seated. Father, we ask now that you take every speck of men out of the way and let the Holy Spirit speak to your people. Bless the reading of your word. Bless the heart of your people. Because men shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We praise you and we lift up the name of Jesus this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we thank God for the revelation of the evening time. How many know who the prophet is? A prophet is God speaking to the people. Amen? Amen? Through human lips. That's who a prophet is. And this book of Revelation is written in symbols. Amen? It was not revealed when Paul was here. It was not revealed in the first age. You can only know this book by revelation. That's why we needed a prophet. Amen. Amen. Because when John was in the Isle of Patmos, he said this. Let me read you Revelation 1. He said the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servant things which must shortly take place. See, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ, not of a pastor, not of a man. This book is the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him. So it must be given to you by God. It cannot be given to you by a seminary. It cannot be given to you by a man or churches. Amen. It should be given. It must be given to you by God. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Amen. So John is the top of the church. And God sent his angel, a messenger, to reveal this book to John, which is the top of the bride. Now if you notice, this book is written in symbols. They could not understand it. Some of the people said, John had a nightmare and he began to write Revelation. No, he did not have a nightmare. It's written in symbol. That's why in this evening time, we need a prophet to come and tell us what this book is. Amen? Amen. Now watch here. We want to talk about the throne. <coughs> this morning, we want to see about the throne. Amen? Amen? What is the meaning of the thrones? Where are those thrones? And how many thrones are there? Watch with me here, Revelation 3. Let's go through the scripture. Verse 21, to him who overcome, amen, to the bride, to the church, 
to the individual that will overcome. Amen. How do you overcome? By the word. How do you overcome Satan and all of his kingdom, all of his deceit? Oh, praise God. Amen. In this evening time, he's coming. All oh, hell is risen up against the church Amen. because this is the end time. This is the last age. This is the last church. The church came out from Laodicea into the broad age. And he's saying to him that shall overcome. And the prophet say, we only can overcome by the word. And you receive the word by revelation. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing the word of Christ by revelation. Him that shall overcome. In the time past, in the dark ages, they came unto you. And they said, do you believe Jesus Christ? You say, yes, I do. And they said, do you still believe Jesus Christ? You say, yes, I do. And they took you to the stake. They said, do you still believe Jesus Christ? Yes, I do. Well, we're going to burn you. You have two choices. Either you reject him, hallelujah, and you go free. But if you keep confessing him, we're going to burn you at the stake. See, they had the spirit of an oxen. Remember the brother talking about the four animals, the four beasts, the four living creatures around the throne. One of them was the ox, the other the lion, the man, and the eagle. In that age, the dark ages, they had the spirit of an ox, so they can resist. Hallelujah. Do you want to confess Jesus Christ? If you do, we're going to kill you. But in this age, the victory, they're not going to take you to burn you at the stake. In this age, it's all hell is risen with deception trying to deceive you. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, 24, if it was possible, even the elect will be seduced, but they cannot. Amen. 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 Because they have revelation. Amen. Amen. As the enemy come with deception, God moves to the church by revelation. Amen. 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 To him that overcome. This is the age of the overcomer. You cannot overcome if there's no test. If there's no trial. Praise God. You need to overcome. You cannot overcome if the throne of God is not in you. Amen. How many thrones are there? Three. Three. Why? Because God is perfect in three. Amen. Holy. Holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You could say, why? They don't say it ten times or a million times. Three is perfection. Praise God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three, He saves you through justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Spirit. Three is the perfect number. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So there are three thrones. How many knows where those thrones are? Let's read the prophet in the book of Revelation chapter 4. He said, now the first throne was in heaven. Amen? The judgment seat. See, the first throne is in heaven. The second throne was in Christ. Amen? The third throne is in man. So there are three thrones. Perfection. One is in heaven. What's the meaning of that throne? What's the purpose of that throne in heaven? The second throne is in Christ. Amen. What's the purpose of the throne in Christ? Now the third throne is in you. What's the purpose of the throne in you? We're going to look this morning and try to study these things in the light of the message. Now let's go back to Revelation 3, 21. To him who overcome, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. See, Jesus is talking about his throne. I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Two thrones. My throne and the father's throne. Are they different? What is his throne? And what is the father's throne? See, he said to him that overcome, 
I will grant to sit on my throne. Now notice this. You cannot sit in the throne if the throne is not in you. Amen. 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 The throne of God must be in you first so that you can overcome because the throne in you, hallelujah, is God in you. Amen. It's the control tower. When you have the throne in you, then you can overcome and sit with him on his throne. Amen. The throne of Jesus Christ. But he says, as I also overcome and sit with my father on his throne. So Jesus has a throne. And the father has a throne. What are those thrones? Amen. That's why you need a prophet to come and begin to expand this word. Oh, praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, this throne in heaven, we're going to focus on the first throne, which is in heaven. Then we'll go to the throne in Christ, the meaning of it, the purpose. Then we go to the throne in you. Hallelujah. This throne is in heaven. The prophet said the first throne was in the heaven. Which heaven? How many heavens are there? Five, six, ten. How many heaven? How many heaven? Oh, message believer. How many heavens are there? Three. Three. Remember, God always runs in three. Three is perfection. Amen. One is God. Notice the circle. He has no beginning. It has no ending. If you take a circle. There's no way you can begin or end in a circle. That's eternity. But when you unfold the circle, it becomes like one. That's God. Number one is God. Two is agreement. Three is perfection. Amen? Amen. Seven is a complete number. Father is grace. Brother Brown said four is the number of men. So is six a number of men. You were created on the sixth day. So there are three heavens. Amen? Amen. What is the first heaven? What is the second heaven? What is the third heaven? Where is this throne? Is the throne in the first heaven? Is the throne in the second heaven? Is the throne in the third heaven? This throne is in the third heaven. Amen. 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 Praise God. <coughs> Hallelujah. Then let's turn to the book of 2 Corinthians 12. You say, preacher, is the term third heaven in the Bible? That's what we're going to see. Because the message came and there is light. This Bible has become a new book. Amen. Somebody shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Read, uh, Second Corinthians 12. You need to go scriptures, message, scriptures, quotes, and scriptures and quotes. And see Jesus Christ the same yesterday, <laughs> today, and forever. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. <clears throat> we are talking about the third heaven. Where the first throne is. Amen. Now look at this 2 Corinthians 12. It is doubtless not profitable to me to boost. I will come to vision and revelation of the Lord. This is the first messenger talking. He was full of revelation of the Lord. Wait. When does last messenger come? The seventh messenger come. Praise God. Paul said, we see like in the dark. We see like in a mirror. But in this day, in this last message, we have seen Christ face to face. Amen. 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 I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body or I do not know, <laughs> Whether not on the body, I do not know. God knows. Hallelujah. Amen. Now watch here. Paul is talking about himself. He said, I know a man. See how humble he is. Whether in the body, I don't know. Whether out of the body, I don't know. But God knows. But in the days of the seventh angel, when it shall begin to sound, Amen. the mystery of God shall be revealed. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the prophet comes and he says that you need to be out of the body. Now we notice here Paul was in a tear of body. Amen. Amen. 
It's not a mystery anymore. What here, Paul talking to the first church, he said, whether in the body or after the body, I do not know. But the prophet one time, he was laying on his bed. Somebody shout. Amen. And he said, I don't know what we're going to be on the other side. Are we going to be a ghost? Or just something, a spooky thing going, something like that. Here goes Brother Neville. Here goes Brother Branham. And the voice said, do you want to see beyond the curtain of time? Say, that will help me a lot. Hallelujah. Amen. All of a sudden, praise God. He came out of the body and he looked down. His body was laying there old. He was in another body really young. Heaven is not far, my friends. Amen. He was in the sixth dimension. Amen. How many dimensions are there? Seven. Seven. A complete number. Now he went into the sixth dimension where the saints.